Hey guys, Andy here. Welcome back to a brand new Life After Navy episode. In today's episode, guys, I decided to change it up a little bit, wearing the old boot camp hoodie, just to kind of keep it fresh, keep it spicy, keep it hundo for y'all. But today we're gonna be answering a question from one of my viewers. Um, sorry it took me so long to get to this one, but I had a whole bunch of other stuff to deal with. But in any event, we're gonna be answering this question today in this video, but before we get to that, I do want to uh, keep the lights on and plug the old Patreon, so patreon.com slash thenisan for just one USD a month. You get exclusive primo access, including early access videos, rough draft concepts, and a whole lot more. And I'm also gonna be looking into doing patron exclusive live streams as well. So be on the lookout for that. So once again, patron.com slash the Andy Son, just one USD a month. And if you want to pay more, hey, <laughs> I can't stop you. Helps keep the lights on even longer. And you know what? This Crystal Pepsi don't pay for itself. So the more the merrier, right? So in any event, it also gets me one step closer to no longer being a burger flipper. There we go. <laughs> With that said, guys, Let's get right into the question. So this question is from Janet Johnson, and sorry if I'm, you know, getting a little bit, a little bit too intimate for y'all, but uh, I don't have my glasses on because I got these fresh, hot, spicy shades on. So let me just read through this question right here, looking all sexy like. So, Miss Johnston, sorry, <laughs> you mentioned that you saved money to exit the military, but burned through it quickly. You also mentioned that you would not choose to stay in or return to the Navy if given the chance. With that in mind, knowing what you know today, what would you have done differently to prepare for exiting the military that would have been of benefit to you now? And what would you recommend those who are getting or who are going to exit the military do to prepare now? It took me a while to think of a couple answers, and I want to preface these by saying that everybody's situation is different. Everybody has different things that they have to worry about when exiting the military. There is no one size fits all solution to everybody. But for me, as a single guy in his 30s, this was basically my things that I would change if I had to do this whole thing all over again. So the number one thing, obviously, would be to research colleges better and to actually physically go to those colleges because on paper, Western Michigan University is definitely a highly rated college, especially in GI jobs, which is the main resource that I use to look up uh, military friendly colleges in the relative closeness to my family because I wanted to get a college that was close enough to my family to where I could visit them on weekends but not close not like too close to where I'd run into them at the grocery store so I originally wanted to go to a couple universities out in Ohio but I got the extremely cold response like three weeks after I sent them an email and to their veterans department, no less. And they were just telling me stuff like, well, you didn't apply at the right time, so good luck, kid. Those colleges in Ohio were out, so I moved on to Michigan, applied over at Western, sent them an email saying, hey, I'm getting out such and such time. What am I gonna do to get the GI Bill rolling and get enrolled into classes ASAP? Well, they got back to me within a couple days, got everything all set up, so I'm thinking like, oh yeah, this is great, you know? They got back to me, they said yes to me right away after I finally exited the military and set up some dates to actually tour the campus physically instead of just clicking online and looking at pictures and videos and stuff. My first day up here in Kalamazoo was kind of iffy. I had a whole bunch of little red flags here and there just with the general layout of things and just, you know, with campus. It wasn't really quite what I was expecting, but you know, I had to kind of lower my expectations, be more realistic, so I was I was giving it the benefit of the doubt. And then originally I was in a major that I wasn't really too passionate about, but had a lucrative future. Took a lot of hard classes, or at least classes that were hard for me. They may be super easy for other people, but for me they were really hard. I really didn't do that well. Really kicked my GPA in the old Balzac. Was put on academic probation and decided to switch majors over to something that I'm much more passionate about, which is film, video, and media. Once I switched over to that major, and started taking classes for, for, uh, for that major, um, things started to turn around. I started getting my GPA back up again, but earlier this year, 2017, I suffered some really bad financial setbacks. It was really hard for me to 
continue to pay the bills and go to school. And just that, that friction was really hard on me mentally. And so I went into a really bad depression and I sought out help on campus to try to help me make sense of it, or at least have somebody to listen to me. You know, that was like bare minimum, just have somebody listen to me just go off on a tear. And their resources were, to put it nicely, lacking. They're very underfunded, and I'm sure the people that are there are well-meaning, but overall their resources were very much lacking for students' actual mental well-being. And once I started coming out of the slump, and once I moved over here to this lovely place, cut back on a lot of expenses, started basically getting myself together financially. But at that point, um, it was pretty much t too little too late. And my grades had already suffered to the point where um, it just kind of was what it was. And uh, I decided to transfer over to the local community college to help uh, rebuild my GPA and uh, I'm working on an associate's degree. And then once I get the associate's degree, then I'll transfer over to a four-year school to get my four-year degree. Basically based off of the credits that I'm getting from the community college, as well as credits I got from Western. Combined, that's kind of how we're gonna do things here. Um, this is actually my first week over at the new school. And you know, I can't really give like an overall review of it because this is literally like a couple days after I started. Whereas with Western, I was kind of, not really apprehensive, but a lot of little red flags and was getting a lot of weird gut feelings when touring campus and stuff like that. I was just kind of like, I don't know. When I went out to KVCC, which is the school I'm going to, when I went out there, it was none of that. It felt right, you know, whether it was just touring the campus just to kind of see how it is, how it's laid out. A lot of facilities over, especially at the main campus, are a bit older than Western, or at least older looking, but it has, it has more of an open feel, which I really do like. And it, it just feels, it has a different energy, you know, with, with Western it's more for like traditional college age students, so if I was like fresh out of high school or maybe just a skosh older, I would probably have no problem fitting in with Western and doing my thing out there. But being a non-traditional college student, I just felt it was not the right fit for me. So I transferred over to a different school. So far, things have been going pretty well. And I feel, I feel like I fit in there because there's a lot of non-traditional students that go to community college, you know, for various reasons, you know, whether it's the mother who had to put her academic life on hold for a while to raise her kids, and now that she's gotten to a good point in her life, she's decided to go back to school, or whether it's just somebody who's working through some of the basic gen eds and then transferring to a four-year college to finish out. Um, there's just It just runs the whole gamut of different types of people out there. So I feel like I belong at that campus a lot more than I did at Western. So moral of the story, the TLDR version is do your research, but also take it with a grain of salt and overall do tours if you can. Now I know when you're getting out, you're gonna be super busy doing a whole bunch of stuff but once you get out, or if you go on terminal leave or whatever, be sure to actually physically visit the campuses and to see if it actually has that energy of that, like, yeah, I could see myself being here. And if you start getting too many red flags, you know, maybe thank them for their time and, you know, go elsewhere. And there's no shame in that. And I guess one of the second things I would talk about would be, um, I basically did my college stuff in reverse. So if I had the chance to do it again, I would probably go to a community college to knock out a lot of the basic gen eds, transfer over to a four-year university to finish out my degree proper, and in less time too. So I don't have to deal with all the bullshit stuff over at the four-year university. Um, another way that I would probably go about it, um, knowing what I know now, would be to probably transfer over to a, uh, an American college out in Japan. The options are very limited. Uh, I've only really known of two that are like bona fide American universities with a campus in Japan. Very different from a Japanese college. So there's a very slight difference and that difference makes all the world of difference. <laughs> Especially when it comes to GI Bill funding because they basically treat it as if you were 
going to a college in the States, whereas if you went to a, a foreign university, your funding would be very limited. So for me, um, I probably would have went to like Temple. That's like the most popular one to do my whole degree and everything like that. That way I wouldn't have had to have moved back to America. I wouldn't have had to spend all that money, you know, moving expenses to come from Ohio to Michigan to move all my stuff. I probably would have ended up selling all my stuff, uh, except for a couple bags of clothes, a laptop and stuff like that. I probably would have just ended up being in Japan, going to Temple, doing my thing out there. And uh, near the end of my time out there, I'd probably look for a job to uh, get a working visa after I'm done. And I would actually physically be in Japan, which is definitely very helpful in finding a job because although technology has improved and a lot of Japanese companies are more willing to work with foreigners who are in their home country trying to come over to Japan to get a work visa through you know, like maybe Skype interviews or something like that. There's still a lot of traditional companies where it's like, if you want a job in Japan, you have to actually be in Japan to come in for the interviews and stuff like that. And that can take a lot of time and more importantly, money. I figured, you know, being at university, I'd already be there anyway. So killing two birds with one stone there. So those are just a couple things I would do differently. Um, as far as like financial stuff, I think I did everything I wanted to do. You know, with some things, I felt that I needed to spend a little more just to, if anything, remove the temptation to uh, spend when I didn't have money to spend when I got out. So, getting the, uh, the Surface Pro tablet for school, very important. Getting the custom-built PC, the chill box, off to my side, what I'm recording on right now, very important. And it also allows me to edit videos for a living. Like literally, I get paid to do this now, so that's pretty nice. And uh, over time, it's gonna eventually uh, pay itself off, so I have no problem spending a little extra change on uh, Primo gear, so. Or at least Primo gear circa like 2015, so. <laughs> but in any event, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough for this video, so the TLDR version would be to um, better research campuses, actually physically go to the campus to get an idea of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, also, possibly going to community college to get rid of a lot of uh, gen eds and stuff like that and just to accelerate uh, your time at college so that way you can get a, uh, a good job right away. At least that's the idea. <laughs> and also for me, I probably would have just uh, went to Temple starting out so that way I could actually be in Japan, do my Japan thing. And also near the end of my time at Temple, look for a job and uh, hopefully just transfer over to that once I graduate. So that's what I would have done differently if I had to do this whole uh, getting out of the military thing again. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.